welcome back to our class don't forget to subscribe if it is your first time to visit our channel today we'll be looking at uh, tropism which we call the plant response to environment so basically what is tropism is a response a plant response to environment also plants can respond the way humans respond however their response is a little bit uh, slower compared to the response of human so let's look at um this in detail response to environment by plants sometimes you call it a tropism scientifically it is tropism tropism is a turning towards or away from the stimulus in the environment by plants. When you talk about uh, turning towards or away, this must be a growth response. So they must be growing uh, towards or away from uh, the stimulus. When you talk about a stimulus, a stimulus is a change in the environment. For example, light falling on the plant, uh, gravity, amount of water. So tropism, it, it is as a result of um, plant responding to the stimulus in the environment and the stimulus is the change in the environment if you look at human beings changing environment i can call you sound becomes a change in environment all that is stimulus but in case of plants now in this case we are going to be looking at two kinds of stimuli that is light and then gravity however there are so many uh, stimuli which we can uh, use but in our um, area we are going to be looking at light and gravity it's being controlled by hormones we are going to look at the number of hormones in this case some of the hormones in plants include number one auxins you're going to look at auxins number two gibberellins number three abscisic acid these are the three hormones we are going to look at we are going to look at the effect of each hormone on the plants Let's look at the general functions of auxins. Auxins are just chemicals, just chemicals, a group of hormones. So, so we are saying that auxins are powerful growth hormone produced naturally by plants. They are found in shoot and the root. When you talk about a shoot, it's a, the top part of the plant, and then the root is the bottom part of the plant. So now when you talk about tips, it means that the the last part of the plant, the last part of the root and the last part of the, the, the shoot is what you call the tips. They're saying that some of the functions include, number one, we have what called apical dominance. Apical comes from the word apex, which means the tip, like on top. Yes, it, it brings about apical dominance. It brings about the tree to grow straight tall without being um, disturbed or without bringing so many branches. It can continue growing tall. Number two, growth uh, regeneration. It, it, it controls the rate at which growth uh, is taking place. So number three, yeah, cell division. If you look at uh, growth and the cell division, they're almost uh, connected because if there is no cell division, then it means that growth cannot take place. So when cell division occurs, basically mitosis, remember mitosis, the major function of mitosis is to bring about growth. So uh, when mitosis, the cells divide by mitosis, they are supposed to, to, to get elongated. When they elongate, then we bring about what you call growth. So the cell must elongate. They must um, increase in height and size so that now growth can be brought about. Formation of um, adventitious roots in, uh, in cuttings, the way you see them here. And then you're saying that uh, development of fruits, it also increases in the development of what? Development of, of fruits. Abscission of leaves and ripe uh, fruits. Abscission, it means that a dropping of the leaves, aging, aging of the what? Of the leaves. Yes, this causes leaves and fruits to fall. You see a nice mango on the tree and then you don't, or you want it in the morning, you come back by the time you pass it, uh, you find that the mango is done. What caused that? Yes, it is auxins. However, you'll find out that even abscisic acid, before it was a function of abscisic acid to do all that, but now it is also involved with uh, auxins. If you look at uh, gibberellins, the function of the gibberellins, these are plant hormones that regulate various developmental, developmental processes. These developmental processes include, number one, stem elongation. Now the stem elongates. 
yes stem elongation it increases in what in in length yes number two it brings about germination yes when the seed it undergoes dormance then it's supposed to germinate when you put the seed into the soil what brings it about is about geberalins and number three it breaks dormancy like when during winter the seeds don't germinate but during summer when it has started raining then dormancy is being broken down it's being broken down by geberalins and then you have a uh, flowering flowering you know when it's time for valentines then you have what called flower development flowering and flower development is different and then lastly it brings about leaf and fruit senescence it's also uh, like uh, aging of the what uh, aging of leaves and fruits uh, on the what on the plants so that is the meaning of uh, senescence then you're saying that abscisic acid function of abscisic acid this one is very important in 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 many plant developmental processes Developmental processes include number one, seed dormancy. It brings about seed dormancy. It means that it works mostly in winter. Then you have bud dormancy, like the buds they cannot develop the way you see it here. And then it, so it makes it to be dormant. It does not uh, does not uh, grow. Then you have uh, what you call controls. Uh, it the control of uh, organ size that, and also uh, stomato closure uh, stomata these are I, I i usually call stomata uh, the nose of the plants because they breathe through stomata if it's one it's called this uh, stoma if there are many we call them stomata stomato closure it means that they close and then they open so in most cases um they close during night and they open during day they open so that they can allow air to come in. Then you also have leaf shedding. It's also bring about in, in, in shedding of leaves. In most cases, if you look at uh, the deciduous plants, those ones which are going to, when they see that there is a dry season, then the leaves fall. So it brings about shedding. Trees lose their leaves the way you see them uh, here. So basically, those are some of the functions of, of um, auxins, geraldine, and abscisic acid. Then he's saying that um, control of weeds by using plant hormones. Hormones can be used to control weeds. Plant growth hormones, auxins, can be used to promote growth of, 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 of plants. So because of that, it can be used as a technique to um, kill other plants by outcompeting others. So now what we are saying that selective, selective weed killers contain growth hormones that cause the weed to grow really quickly to die. It's like weed is not, I don't mean the one people smoke. Weed means unwanted plant anywhere. Unwanted plant anywhere. So that, they, they call it weed because it's not needed in your body. So let's call it, it's a weed, weed to grow so what they do is they make these weeds to grow very fast. When they grow very fast, they use all the nutrients which are around them, and then they end up um, sh short of the nutrients before the process of growth is complete. Therefore, because they don't have nutrients to use, then they die. Then the other ones, the other plants which we are growing at a lower pace, then for them now they continue growing without being interfered with these weeds. So that's the technique how these ones used to kill other plants. This can be useful to get rid of weeds without killing the grass or crops. And then you're saying that this means that weeds is absorbing nutrients. So the weeds absorb nutrients from the soil at much higher rate so that they absorb the weed killer in much larger quantities than the beneficial plants. The weed has ability to absorb we are saying that, hence, killing the weeds without killing the grass. So what they do is they try to absorb this weed killer at a great extent. Then they end up uh, dying before the actual time and then leaving these other crops to grow. So basically, if you look at uh, auxins, we say that auxins, um, in, in, in summer, auxins are growth promoters. They break promote growth. But now how are they used as weed killers? So what they do, you just have to spray it on the crops involving the weeds or including the weeds. So what they do, the weeds 
what you, they will do they will, because they have the ability to absorb at a higher rate so they're going to absorb these uh, oxygens at a higher rate and then they're going to grow very fast compared to the normal plants they will end up uh, uh, growing very fast uh, using all the nutrients they, they are supposed to use and then they end up dying before these other crops die and then when they die they leave ample space for these other crops to grow without being affected that's how they are being used let's look at uh, phototropism in plants <laughs>